Welcome to the penultimate, at least in regards to Santiago, Kale's Travails. So today was the second to last day. Tomorrow's the last time I have to wake up and walk. And that's crazy to me. That's crazy to me. There were so many times I didn't think I was going to make it. But we'll talk about that more on the reflection side. Let's start on the walk side. So I got up this morning. Went downstairs in the albergue, had a little bit of juice. They didn't have any fresh croissants, so I got like a pre-packaged one with chocolate. Bad idea. Never again. It was, I would have been better off with just the pineapple juice. I don't know if that's actually true, but I was not. It was not the best. Um, took off. Now the first four plus kilometers were uphill. Just uphill. Luckily, only parts of it were super steep. Most of it was pretty manageable. Um, so, you know, you start trucking uphill. But on the plus side... I turned around at one point and the river or the Rio Ulla or Ula, whatever the heck it's called, was just kicking off tons of fog. And then there was the bridge for the train. So it was a bridge and sunrise and fog. And it was, it was quite exceptional. And as I'm going uphill in front of me is the nearly full moon. I think it's the recently waxing, but it's huge in the sky. I didn't post any pictures because you can never really get a good picture of the moon like ever. I thought if you had something to like put it against that helped and I said there are trees it didn't help it didn't look good <laughs> but I loved it I loved marching towards that moon sunrise behind me uphill there was this one tunnel that I had to go through which I'm pretty sure was a pedestrian tunnel but on the side that I started on it was you know that morning glow on you look through it dark there was so much tree cover on the other side that it was practically like night and day um today I walked through a mix of forests, you know, some of them were deciduous, some of them were coniferous, some of them were old, some of them were young. At one point I just opened up and there were all of these um, new, gosh, my brain's not finding the word, grapes on vines, vineyards, new vineyards <laughs> with these baby plants. And I was jealous, I would love to own a vineyard. It was beautiful. I gotta tell you, for the first half of today's walk, I was high as a kite. I was just smiling and I was like, I can go forever. I may have started crying at the beauty of some of the views while smiling because just the idea that tomorrow, tomorrow's the last day. Um, so latter half, I had to get a sayo, of course. So stopped off in a town. It took, cost me probably about a kilometer, maybe more to go somewhere to get a stamp, but I didn't have too far to go today. I was feeling good. So I went and I ordered just, you know, uh, a soda and he gave me free little nibbles of breakfast because that's not uncommon here. You order a drink, they give you a snack. Um, and then as I was leaving, he also gave me a free bottle of water just to say Buen Camino, which was really, really sweet. Um, when I arrived here, I am currently in Desiro. Um, it was a little bit before the albergue opened, just slightly before noon. The woman who runs this place, Carmenia, she is wonderful just warm and friendly and caring wants to know that you love everything um wants to look out for you so working with her has been really really nice i came in once they opened here showered washed my clothes all the usual stuff and then people people i started to book the rest of my trip now that i know tomorrow's santiago day I booked a day trip out to Finisterre. I changed my hotel in Madrid to be longer so I can go do some tourism in Madrid. I booked my train from Santiago to Madrid. I booked my hostel in Santiago. It's, it's all coming together. Oh my God. So today's reflection was on self-judgment. It was on being too hard on myself. So like I said earlier, you know, tomorrow's, tomorrow's it and there were a lot of times I didn't think it was gonna happen. Now, sometimes that was because of an acute injury, but sometimes it was because of a minor injury, and sometimes it was because I was getting myself so stressed out about succeeding, whatever that might mean, that I was waking up sick in the morning. I was, I was more stressed to walk than joyful, and I was just like, why am I doing this? Why am I out here to wake up every morning stressed that I'm going to fail? And after some tough conversations with friends and family, and thank you to every single one of you who was involved in this come to Jesus moment, the only one putting that pressure is me, right? 
No one viewing this, looking at my Instagram, Facebook, people I'll talk to later, nobody cares if I did only 200 miles instead of 300 or 350 or whatever else it could have been. Nobody cares if I walk 10 miles and then take a cab for two. I'm the only one who sees that as failure. And why is that even a failure? If you were to look at me a year ago, sedentary, sedentary, I did nothing. You know, I was still in that pandemic, blah, like so many others. And I just, I wasn't leaving the house, basically. I asked my family, I just didn't leave the house. Um, and then planning for this trip really got me out and moving and engaging. And, and sure, it didn't look exactly like my first plan, my second plan, my third plan. It probably doesn't even look like the sixth plan I made, but I did something. Whatever I did is more than I would have done if I hadn't come. And, and the fact that I was putting so much pressure on myself that I was feeling sick is just, I mean, it's stereotypically me. Um, but it's so stupid, <laughs> it's so stupid. So I'm not gonna say that I'm magically cured of my super hard on myselfness. If I had had to bail due to injury on this last 100 kilometers, that would have been really hard for me. Um, I'm so grateful that I can finish it because <laughs> then I don't have to work through the emotional fallout of not finishing it. So I'm not gonna say that I'm gonna go back and suddenly be like, I am giving myself so much more space and patience. No, I'm not cured. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work harder because what value did any of that judgment have? Nothing. It made me sick. It made me miserable. And no one else gave a crap. <laughs> and, and I think, I mean, I don't know why this trip's the thing that finally made me realize. It's not like I wasn't aware before that I'm too hard on myself. This is something people have been telling me forever but you know maybe it's time to turn over that new leaf maybe that's what pilgrimages are for or maybe you'll talk to me in four months and I'll be giving myself too hard a time for something new who knows um but that's what I thought about today as I was walking right even in the latter half when I started to get tired and it hadn't even been that long of a day and my arches were starting to hurt and I was like oh man this is only a short day I'm trying to get into that and be like I hear you yelly part of my brain however we're still out here. We're still doing it. We're making it to Santiago tomorrow. And I might have even seen the cathedral today. Aunt Marianne, thanks for the spot. I'm glad you're with me on that. Um, so yeah, so that's what I thought about today on my penultimate journey. Tomorrow to Santiago, I have a hostel. Um, it's only about seven miles. The pilgrim office where I can get my final stamp and hopefully my certificate of completion opens at 10. I probably won't be there at 10, but mass is at noon. So I would love to be able to get into Santiago by 11. Mm. Cause that means I could wait in line at the pilgrim office for a whole hour if I had to and still make mass. However, of course, if the pilgrim office line's too long or if I'm just barely making mass or I'm late for whatever reason, um, I can go to the pilgrim office after mass or I can go to mass on another day. So tomorrow I go to Santiago and I sleep there. The following day, I booked a day trip to Finisterre where I can see the end of the world. I'm very excited. It was at one point thought to be the westernmost point of Europe. It's, you know, looking over the Atlantic. I love the ocean. I only booked a day trip just because public transit can be, or transit at all can be challenging. And this was the way it worked out. And then the day after, so tomorrow's the 23rd, Finisterre the 24th, the 25th, I have a train in the evening back to Madrid. So I'll spend, you know, most of the day on the 25th here in Santiago, just exploring. And then I'll take the train back. I extended my hotel reservations. So now I'm actually spending four nights, but I arrive super late one night. And then the last night is just before my flight. So really I have, actually, I think I have three days. I don't feel like doing the math right now or thinking at all, but I think I either have two or three full days in Madrid, which is going to be great. One of them I'm going to spend entirely by the pool. So much sunscreen. And then, you know, the other two, I can go look at gardens and architecture and museums and who knows. So that's the plan. We'll see what happens. But that's the plan. Tomorrow, uh, I think tomorrow I'll post two videos um, or I'll record two videos. Obviously, the posting isn't going well, but I'll record two videos. One is going to be right when I arrive. It'll just be for like, <laughs> here's the cathedral. And then at the end of the day, we'll do a final little reminisce session. And then, you know, I can still record 
I'm gonna go to Finisterre, who knows? We'll see. But uh, tomorrow's the end of the scripted journey. Thank you to everyone who's come so far. And I'll catch you tomorrow. God willing, in Santiago.